How are you doing everyone? And welcome back to the last video in the test questions section. There will be 13 questions in this section and yet we're just going to get stuck in and get them done. Question one, what is the basic legal obligation if you are involved in a car accident? So what is the basic legal obligation if you are involved in a car accident? Answer, stop your vehicle and remain at the scene for a reasonable time period. Give assistance to anyone who's injured. You must give your name, address and evidence of insurance to a guard at present. Or if there is no guard at present to anyone else involved in the accident or an independent witness. So a bit of a mouthful that one. What is the basic legal obligation if you are involved in a car accident? Stop your vehicle and remain at the scene for a reasonable time period. Give assistance to anyone who is injured. You must give your name, address, and evidence of insurance to a guard present, or if there is no guard present, to anyone else involved in the accident or an independent witness. Question two. At the stop sign that has no white line, where should you stop? Answer, you should stop at the sign. All right, that one could come up a few different ways. So this one says, at a stop sign that has no white line, where should you stop? The answer is, you should stop at the stop sign. If that said a stop sign with a lion, we stop just before the lion. All right. Question three. What restrictions are there in relation to using the horn? So what restrictions are there in relation to using the horn? You must not use the horn in a built up area between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. except in the case of an emergency. That's an important one. So what restrictions are there in relation to using the horn? Answer, you must not use the horn in a built up area between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. except in the case of an emergency. Question four, within what distance from the curb must you park? So within what distance from the curb must you park? Answer, you must park within 45 centimeters or 1.5 feet from the curb. So within what distance from the curb must you park? You must park within 45 centimeters or 1.5 feet from the curb. Question five, where must you not overtake? This is an important one. So where must you not overtake? Answer, at the bend, on the brow of a hill, on a humpback bridge, continuous white line or anywhere you your view of oncoming traffic is restricted. Once again, so where must you not overtake? At a bend, on the brow of a hill, on a humpback bridge, a continuous white line or anywhere your view of oncoming traffic is restricted. Question six, where should you not park? 
Answer, you should never park near a bend, the brow of a hill, a humpback bridge, at a continuous white line, where your vehicle would obstruct a sign or entrance. Also, double yellow lines. So once more, where should you not park? You should never park near a bend, the brow of a hill, a humpback bridge, or a continuous white line, where your vehicle would obstruct a sign or entrance. How far from a junction must you park? So the answer is five meters. That is the minimum distance we're allowed park before a junction. So how far from a junction must you park? Five meters before the junction. Question eight. How would you identify a zebra crossing? So how would you identify a zebra crossing? Answer, flashing amber beacons. Question nine. What do white diagonal lines in the center of the road mean? So what do white diagonal lines in the center of the road mean? Answer, you should treat them like a traffic island and do not enter the space between the lines. Very important. What do white diagonal lines in the center of the road mean? It means we should treat them like a traffic island and do not enter the space between the lines. Question 10. What does the island in the center of a pedestrian crossing mean? So again, what does the island in the center of a pedestrian crossing mean? It means that each side of the island is a separate crossing. That means two separate, say, when you press for the green man to come on, two separate crossings. That's all that means. Question 11. When should you use your fog lights? So once more, when should you use your fog lights? Answer, dense fog or falling snow. Very importantly, we'd also be using our dipped headlights with that. So when should you use your fog lights? We would use our fog lights in dense fog or fallen snow. If you are asked what headlights would you use with your fog lights, it would be your dipped headlights. Question 12, if it is safe to overtake a cyclist in speed zones over 50 kilometers an hour, what is the recommended minimum passing distance? Once more, if it is safe to overtake a cyclist in speed zones over 50 kilometers per hour, what is the recommended minimum passing distance? Answer, allow a minimum of 1.5 meters. Very important. So the next one is question 13. If it is safe to overtake in speed zones up to 50 kilometers per hour, what is the recommended passing distance? So the first one says over 50. The second one says up to 50. In that case, we allow a minimum of one meter. So up to 50, one meter distance all right that's you that's your 40 odd questions and um, go over them as much as you can really get that into your head so it's just automatic for you when you're asked so well done keep up the good work we're on the right track here and i'll see you on the next live